Good everyone, my name is Graphics. Today we want to solve another exercise on link nexism where we will be replicating the diagram at the top right corner of the screen. Now, if you look at the question that follows this problem, this figure, the question goes like this. It says, in the given mechanism, the crank OA revolves anti-clockwise about O, right? This is O and this is A. That is the crank, right? That means the radius of the crank OA. So you see this circle here is called the crank and it revolves about point O. This is point O here. So this crank rotates about point O. The end B of the rod AB is constrained to move always along PQ. So the end B, that means this is the end here. B is connected to A. So as A moves anti-clockwise about O, B is constrained to move vertically upward and downward along PQ. That is what it means. Right? Now, now I told that plot the locus of arrow. This is locus of arrow, right? For one revolution, that is one complete turn of OA. Right? If OA is given as 30 centimeter, AB is 105 centimeter, and AR is 70 centimeter, scale 1 millimeter to 1 centimeter. So it means that for every 1 millimeter is 1 centimeter. So when you say 1 millimeter is equal to what? 1 centimeter. That is what it means here. So let's see how this goes. The first thing you're going to draw is your horizontal and your vertical line so when i pick this up i will draw this horizontal line this way you can see that and i'll take this and i'll draw the vertical line this way you can see that so where they meet is at this point so after doing that that point will locate the center of my crank which is o so if you look at this, this is point o so that point is the center of my crank o i want to draw OA. OA is the radius of the crank, right? And the OA is given as what? 30 centimeters, it's are saying 30 millimeter. So I'm going to pick my compass and I am going to measure the radius of what? Of 30 from 0 to 3 is what we call 30 millimeter, right? So I'm going to come here and I'll place it at the center here, right? Where I am going to draw my crank. So this is what we call the crank. I'll take it. Now, after that, I've gotten my center <clears throat> point O. This is the point O here, right? So I am now going to get point A and the way I can get point A is for me to divide this crank into 12 equal division like in my previous video I taught you how to divide the circle right so one of the ways is to use your c square another way is to use your what your compass and the fastest way to do it is by using your compass so when I place with the radius of this circle you can see which is 30 I'm going to place it at this point. I will mark up. I'll come here. I'm going to mark up. I'll come at the top here. I'm going to mark left. And I'll mark right. Right? So when I do that, I'm going to use my rule and use my center O as my reference point. Then I'm going to draw each of those points to be passing through center O. Right, this is the first one. I'll go to the second one also. This is the second one. I'll come here also. This is the third one. Then this also is the fourth one. Right, you can see that. 
that means my O, if you look at your question, this is OA. So OA will be the closest one to this vertical line. If you look at the question, this is A and this is this point here. So this is my A here. All right. I'm going to now tick in it. You can see that? That is my A. So this is OA. So I will start and we are told it's moving in an anticlockwise direction. That means the crank is rotating backward. Right? So if this is A, this will be A1, this will be A2, this will be A3, A4, A5, A6, A7, A8, A9, A10, a11 right now after i've done that the next thing for me to do is that look at the distance between pq is giving us what 60 centimeter right we just are saying 60 millimeter according to the question okay one centimeter to one millimeter right so that means the distance between this and the next point is what 60 so i'm going to take my compass my rule and i'm going to measure 60 away from the center Right, because if you look at this from the center to the next point, because if you look at point O and point P and point um the point O is 60 millimeter away from the line PQ, right? So I'll measure the 60 here from 0 to 6 is 60. So on that point where it meets, I'll now draw a vertical line. A vertical line. So if you look at the question, we are drawing it. A center line so I'll draw this one long one short one long one short one long one short one just like that since the specific distance is not given let's put the PQ in that manner right now we're not told that our P falls along our um, B point B look at this this is point B it falls along PQ. So the only way we can get point B is to measure AB. And from the question, AB is giving us 105. So I'm going to take my meter rule and I'm going to measure 105. So from 1, from 0 to 10 is 100. And in between 10 and 11 is 100 and what? And 5. You can see that? So I'm going to place it from A here. And I'm going to mark at that line there where it cuts the vertical line. That will be my point B. Is that again? That will be what? My point B. So I'm going to connect A and B this way. Right? So connect A and B this way. Right? So we are told that B is moving vertically along this is p right and this is what this is q so b is moving in this manner upward and what downward is that again now i am going to zoom this up a little bit so we have a clear picture of what we are against right now if you look at this closely we are going to repeat this in one revolution right so first one we are not done we are told a arrow that is well told to look for the locus of what of arrow i mean the parts at which arrow is going to form as this crank move anti-clockwise this way and this connecting rod this link is moving this vertically along what pq right so what we'll just do here is we need to locate where arrow is and we are told that our a arrow is giving us what 70 right a arrow is 70 millimeters so i'm going to take my um meter rule and i'm going to measure distance of what 70 and this is where my arrow is situated at this point here that is my point r so I'm going to repeat this process continuously throughout this revolution here. So the first one we know that from here to this point is what? 
is set is um, 105 so i'll go to a also i'm going to mark also another 105 the same measurement so that point will now be b1 since i located b from a1 so it will be called b1 then i will now use my metal rule and i'll connect b1 and a1 just like i connected a and b right so when i do that i will have this this way you can see that so along b1 i got arrow right so i'll still measure 70 from a1 to get arrow one since i from a1 i got from a i got arrow definitely from a1 i'm going to get what arrow one and distance of a arrow is 70 so I'll measure 70 this is 70 here so this will now be what my arrow one so everything along this line will be having a subscript of what of one now the next thing i'm going to do is i'll repeat the same process since we know from a here is this so to get b2 i need to mark 105 from a2 and i'll get here right so this point here will be my b2 right i'm going to now join a2 and b2 together this way right so i'm going to now measure 70 from a2 so that i'll get my r2 so this is what we have and that will be the r what r2 i'll come again i'll repeat the same process the same measurement 105 i'll mark on that pq so from a3 from a what three I'm going to get B3 with a distance of what 105 as I did for A2 and A1. So I'm going to join A3 and B3 this way. Right? So from that point, I'm going to measure 105. I mean 70. So from A3, I'll get R3 because AR is 70. So A3, R3 will also be what? 70. Well, this will be what? My R3. I'll do the same thing so with the same measurement of A arrow, which is 105, come to A4 so that I can easily get my B4. So from here to this point where it intersects here is B4, right? So I'm going to connect A4 and B4 this way. A4 and B4 this way. Is that again so from that point i'm going to measure 70 from a4 so i'm going to get arrow 4 so this is 70 here 0 to 7 is 70 so that'll be my arrow 4 all right similarly i'm going to come to a5 so from a5 i'm going to mark this is 5 here so when i mark on this line that are going to give me b5 so if you look at this it's cutting here so this will be my b5 so i'm going to connect b5 and what and a5 so that i can get my arrow 5 so from a5 to arrow 5 is 70 right so this is 70 here so that will be my arrow 5 right so the same thing, I'll come to A6, I'll repeat the same thing from A, I'll mark here. So this is where the A6 is, right? This is the A6 here, I mean the B6, sorry. So connect B6 and A6 together. So when I do that, so I can easily get my arrow 6 which is distance 70 so this is 70 here so that will be my arrow 6 i'll come again from a7 i'm going to mark on that line pq to get the b7 so i'll connect a7 and b7 so when i connect it this way i can easily get my arrow 7 
right so this is arrow 7 i'll call it arrow 7 distance of 70 from a7 i'll come again to a8 i'm going to mark so this will be the b8 so i'm going to connect b8 and a8 together right and i'm going to measure 70 from a8 along this line so this will be my arrow 8 then i'll come again from a9 i'll repeat the same process i'll mark on that line this way so this will be my b9 so connect a9 and b9 So on that line in which I'm going to get my arrow 9, which is 70. So this will be the arrow 9. Similarly, I'll come to A10. I'll mark on that line. So where it cuts the vertical line will be my B10, which I'm going to connect to A10 in order for me to get my arrow 10 by measuring 70 from a10 along that line so it's going to give me my arrow 10 so this is the arrow 10 then i'll go to a11 and mark on that line this way where it cuts will be my b11 so connecting a11 and b11 is going to give me it's going to give me my arrow 11 so measuring 70 from a11 along that line will give me the arrow 11 which is 70 here so that will be arrow 11 now after i've done that i've gotten all these points through this point i'll get the locus of this point by me getting the curve right so when i do that in order for me to do that i'm going to be using what is called a french curve this is what is called a french curve or you can also use a flexible curve I'm going to connect those points together, right? So the best way I can do that is by taking at least three points. Now I'm taking R1, R2, and R3 simultaneously this way. You can see that this way. Then I'm going to take R11, R1, and R together just this way. I see that. Then I'll come again at this point. I will just like use this three point together. Then I'll join this this way. Right. I'll come here too. I'll do the same thing. Let me take arrow six, arrow seven, and arrow eight, all the three together this way. Then I'll come here also, connect arrow 6, arrow 7, and arrow 5 this way. You can see that? You can easily just join these two together this way. Right? Then the same thing, connect these three together like this arrow 8 and arrow 9 this way. Then you can just join this because it's very small. You can see that so this is the locus of this point here of point arrow so if you have um, find this video helpful please don't forget to click on the subscribe button thanks for watching